hello guys in this particular uh, video we will see again the numerical based on the aircraft air refrigeration but that is basically for the bootstrap air cooling system so in one of the uh, previous video you have seen the uh, same numerical based on the simple air cooling system in this, uh, in this lecture we will see the numerical based on the bootstrap air cooling system fine so here is the statement given uh, a bootstrap cooling system of tent air capacity is used for an aeroplane hmm. the ambient air and uh, air temperature and pressure are given the pressure of air is increased to 1 bar due to ramming uh, the pressure of uh, dish air dishes from the main compressor is given and that to the auxiliary compressor is also given isentropic efficiency for both compressor and the turbines are given Ah, here they have mentioned the 50 percent of the enthalpy of air discharge from main compressor is removed in the first detection layer and 30 percent of the enthalpy of air is discharged from the auxiliary compressor is removed in the second detection layer so these basically the enthalpy are nothing but they have given the heat exchanger effectiveness so for the first detection layer effectiveness they have given the uh, effectiveness as 50 percent whereas for the second detection layer they have given the uh, given the effectiveness as the 30 percent okay and uh, the cooling is uh, done by the uh, ramming here okay? so cooling is done by the ramming here so that uh, we know in the schematic you can identify that and uh, assuming the isentropic uh, ramming the cabin uh, pressure is given as 1.013 bar and uh, temperature is 25 degrees celsius fine so from this first we will try to find out the try to draw the ts diagram at the same time we will be noting down the given data so it will be very easy for us to give the numbers while noting down the given data so this is the ts diagram so initially i'll start with the ambient pressure line so this is the ambient pressure line okay so ambient pressure is given as uh, 0 0.9 bar it is 0 0.9 bar okay so i'll be having the point number one on the ambient pressure line this is the point number one okay so given data i'm writing it down immediately so as I said in the previous uh, video also that first to find out what type of cycle is given type of cycle or the system is given as bootstrap it is given as bootstrap okay then they are given it is okay it's bootstrap they are given then the system is uh, having the cooling capacity of 10 tr so and by having the q is equal to 10 tr again to convert this tr into kilojoule per minute multiply this value by 210 so I'll be multiplying it by 210 as by having 2100 kilojoule per minute. That is the cooling capacity in kilojoule per minute. The ambient air and temperature are given as uh, pressure uh, are given as 15 and 0.9. So ambient temperature that is nothing but the 0.1 conditions they are given. So temperature T1 will be 15 degrees Celsius, which is nothing but 288 Kelvin whereas the pressure with respect to point number one is 0.9 bar given as 0.9 bar the pressure of air is increased to one bar due to ramming so because of ramming the pressure has been increased so i'll be having one more line over here for the ramming pressure and the pressure is given as one bar the pressure is given one bar so basically one to two one to two is the ramming process here they are clearly mentioning assume asymptotic ramming so there is the no uh, loss due to ramming process or there is no any efficiency for ramming is given so no need to show that actual point of 2 dash okay only you can show the point number 2 over here so with respect to point 2 i can write the pressure that is p2 is equal to 1 bar ramming pressure then the uh, pressure of air discharge from main compressor is 3 bar so i know that after ramming pressure i'll be having the next pressure line that is the main compressor pressure line it is the main compressor pressure line okay and the pressure for this is 3 bar so the process from 2 to 3 is isentropic it's a vertical line again okay process 2 to 3 is isentropic process okay so i'll be having p3 is equal to is equal to 3 bar p3 is equal to 3 bar then uh, they are mentioning the efficiency of compressor so obviously i need to show the actual point also over here that is 3 dash that is 3 dash so this is p3 is equal to p3 dash as well okay then uh, we know that after first compressor there will be the heat exchange in the first heat exchanger and because of the heat exchange the temperature will be dropping down so i'll be having the point number four as the heat exchanger point over here okay that is the point number four and the heat exchange process will be at the constant pressure 
So this is the heat exchanger one. This is heat exchanger one. Okay, three to four process. So this pressure also is nothing but the constant. So I can write that P three is equal to P four. Okay. Then after heat exchanger, first heat exchanger, there is the compression in the auxiliary compressor. So there is the compression in auxiliary compressor, and the comp pressure of that compressor is given as four bar. Pressure is given as four bar. So from point number four, there will be the isentropic compression over here up to point number five. So for point number five, the pressure is given as four bar. P five is given as four bar. As they have mentioned, the efficiency for both compressor, we need to show the actual point over here, which is nothing but the five dash, and that is P five is equal to P five dash. Then after the compressor, auxiliary compressor, there will be the Uh, heat exchange in the second heat exchanger. So there is the process in the second heat exchanger over here. Okay, up to the point number six, up to the point number six over here. So this is the second heat exchanger. Okay, so this pressure also is nothing but P six because this heat exchange process is taking place at the constant pressure. There is no any pressure drop mentioned over here. So you can simply take P six is equal to P five is equal to P five dash. Then The air is then will be expanded in the turbine. Okay, so they have not mentioned anything about the turbine exit pressure. However, they have mentioned about the cabin pressure over here. That is 1.013 bar. So directly you can assume that the exit of turbine or the expansion process is up to cabin pressure. So I am having the ramming pressure is one bar. So somewhere over here I will be having the cabin pressure. So this is the cabin pressure. Okay, so up to cabin pressure. I'll be having the expansion over here, so that is nothing but the sorry point number seven over here. That is the point number seven, and this is one point zero one three bar. Okay, and this particular again expansion or the turbine process will have the efficiency of eighty five percent. So I need to show the actual process over here. Okay, so that is seven dash. That is nothing but the seven dash over here. This point will be seven dash, and on this same pressure line. So this pressure will be this cabin pressure will be P7 is equal to P7 dash is equal to the cabin pressure. So I'm, I am I'll plot one point over here, maybe the point number eight, which is nothing but the condition of cabin. Okay, so that is nothing but P8 is equal to 1.013 bar. Okay, so now we can see that this particular process seven dash to eight, seven dash to eight is the refrigerating effect produced. Refrigerating effect produced. Okay. So they have given the condition at point number eight as pressure 1.013 bar and temperature as 25 degrees Celsius. So the T at temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius, which is nothing but 298 Kelvin. I hope the all data we have noted down. Yes, uh, the first heat exchanger effectiveness they have given as 50 percent. So this will be 50 percent, or you can simply write 0.5. And for second heat exchanger, the effectiveness is given as 30 percent. 30 percent, so it is 0.3. Okay. Now what we will do? We will go on finding the temperatures at various uh, points, like 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay. So now again, we write the process 1 to 2. This is the ramming process, which is the isentropic. So I can simply write T2 by T1 is equal to P2 by P1. Plus two gamma minus one upon gamma. Now I know the value of uh, T1. Okay, I know the value of P2. I know the value of P1. I just put everything in this particular formula, and I can get the temperature at point number two. The temperature at point number two is about 296.8 Kelvin. 296.8 Kelvin. Okay. Now. Once you get that uh, one to two process, you can proceed for the next process. That is process two to three, which is again a compression process, isentropic process over here, which is happening in the main compressor. So you can use the formula T3 by T2 is equal to P3 by P2 plus two gamma minus one upon gamma. Now here T2 you have calculated P3 that is main compressor pressure that is given three bar P2 is given. Timing pressure that is one bar is given. Okay, so from this you can get the value of T3, and the T3 will be 406.24 Kelvin. Okay. T3 will be 406.24 Kelvin. Okay, once you do the calculation, you can get the answer. Now here uh, 
this particular uh, process of compression is not perfectly asymptotic there is the loss and that loss is nothing but they have mentioned about the efficiency so we need to get actual compressor exit point or the exit temperature which we have denoted by 3 dash point okay so i will be using the compressor efficiency over here and the compressor efficiency will be minimum difference upon maximum difference so minimum difference is t3 minus t2 and maximum will be t3 dash minus t2 so i can write that t3 minus t2 upon t3 dash minus t2 now here you can see this particular value is given as 80 percent t3 known t2 known so you can easily find out the value of t3 dash from over here so the t3 dash value is around 433.06 433.06 kelvin okay so this is the t3 dash fine now once you get this t3 dash then the next process is process 3 dash to 4 3 dash to 4 this process is happening in the heat exchanger so i'll be writing the formula of heat exchanger effectiveness for the first heat exchanger which will be the actual heat transfer actual heat transfer divided by maximum possible heat transfer maximum possible heat exchange maximum possible heat transfer okay and the actual heat transfer will be from point number 3 dash to point number 4 so it will be t3 dash minus t4 divided by the uh, the uh, maximum possible will be t3 dash to t2 because we are using the ram here for the cooling purpose so it will be t3 dash minus t2 and this value of uh, this uh, heat exchanger effectiveness for first heat exchanger is given as 50 percent that is 0.5 so from this you can get the temperature t4 because t3 dash is known t2 is known to you so t4 is coming around to be 364.5 93 Kelvin okay, that is the T4 value fine now you can go for the next process that is process 4 to 5 which is again isentropic process in the auxiliary compressor so I can write the relation that is T5 by T4 is equal to T5 upon T4 plus 2 gamma minus 1 upon gamma so you refer if you refer T5 by T4 is equal to T5 upon p4 rest to gamma minus 1 upon gamma you know the t4 you know the p4 you know the p5 okay from this you can get the t5 temperature and the t5 temperature is around 396.19 kelvin 396.19 kelvin okay again the auxiliary compressor there are the losses and hence they have mentioned about the efficiency so by putting the efficiency of compressor again over here we can write the formula however you need to take one care over here uh, again that is a minimum difference upon maximum difference that that care has to be taken so it will be t5 minus t4 divided by t5 dash minus t4 okay so from this you can get the t5 dash you can get the t5 dash and the t5 dash is around 404.01 kelvin okay, t5 dash is coming around to be 404.01 kelvin then the next process is process 5 to 6 okay 5 to 6 that is nothing but the heat exchanger process and the second heat exchanger so that is 5 dash rather okay so here again you need to use the second heat exchanger effectiveness formula so uh, actual heat transfer will be actual heat transfer will be t5 dash to t6 okay t5 dash to t6 divided by the maximum possible will be t5 dash minus t2 many of the time the students are making mistake over here they are taking t5 dash minus t4 but please remember this particular heat exchanger uh, exchange is taking place between the ram air and the compressed air so the temperature of ram air will be the t2 over here not the t4 okay so you need to take the t2 value instead of t4 so the students are making mistake over here. this note this value or note this particular thing very clearly and eta to they are given as 0.3 and all these temperatures you uh, have with you or rather t5 dash is known to you t5 known t2 known you can get the t6 very easily over here and the t6 value is coming around to be 371.85 kelvin okay so that is the t6 value you are getting then the next process is expansion in turbine 
so T6 to T7 it is again isentropic process I can use the formula T6 by T7 is equal to P6 by P7 rest to gamma minus 1 upon gamma ok from that I can get the T7 temperature and here you can see T6 T7 P6 value is given that is 4 bar P7 is given as 1.013 bar so you put both the values of pressure P6 is 4, 4 bar this is 1.013 bar P7 T6 you already calculated from this you can get the T1 T7 temperature that is coming around to be 251.16 Kelvin ok that is the T7 temperature now once you get the T7 temperature and they have mentioned about the efficiency of the turbine over here we are supposed to calculate the T7 dash ok so turbine efficiency formula will be again the minimum difference upon maximum difference so now if you observe carefully here the minimum difference will be T6 minus T7 dash not the T6 minus T7 ok so T6 minus T7 will be the maximum difference so T6 minus T7 dash that is the minimum difference T6 minus T7 dash here but the maximum difference is T6 minus T7 from this you can get the actual turbine exit temperature that is T7 dash and the T7 dash will be around 269.26 Kelvin it is around to be 269.26 Kelvin ok and the T8 temperature they have given already the T8 temperature they have given which is nothing but the 225 degrees Celsius that is 298 Kelvin that is 298 Kelvin ok now you have got the temperatures at all the points you can go one by one the first point they have asked is the mass flow rate so as like in the previous uh, video the mass flow rate mass flow rate of air I will be using the value of refrigerating effect Q ok now here if you see the diagram the uh, refrigerating effect is produced between 7 dash to 8 so my formula will be MA CP T8 cabin temperature minus turbine exit temperature T7 dash ok so this value is 2100 T8 T7 already you have calculated CP value is 1 given I think from that the MA you can calculate that is mass as 73.07 and the unit will be in kilojoule per minute because the Q value is in kilojoule per minute ok sorry this is kg per minute extremely sorry this is kg per minute this will be in kilojoule per minute the Q value is in kilojoule per minute so you get the answer of mass in kg per minute convert this kg per minute to k, uh, kg per second because that is required as for calculation of the uh, power so this will be 1.22 kg per second ok this is the mass you have got then you will be finding the power second one is the power and for power the formula will be remaining thing that is MACP the power is nothing but work done across compressor that is T3 dash minus T2 T3 dash minus T2 so by putting everything again you will put the mass over here in terms of kg per second then and then you can get the power in kilowatt ok otherwise you get the power in kilojoule per minute so by doing that you get the power as 165.94 kilowatt you get the values 165.94 kilowatt ok this is the power and finally you can find out the COP over here ok let me just erase this particular part ok just a minute I'll just erase ok so the COP over here will be the COP formula will be that is the refrigerating effect T8 minus T7 dash divided by T3 dash minus T2 ok that is heat absorbed with the cooling capacity divided by the work done from that you can get the COP as 0.21 ok so this is how you are supposed to get solve the problem so here the tricky was the point given that is the enthalpy so don't get confused whether they are mentioning the enthalpy this is nothing but the heat exchanger effectiveness only fine thank you